Welcome back to the IGCSE Computer Science Code 0478 Guide. In this chapter, we will be discussing about problem solving and design. From chapter 9 onwards, I will be teaching about the programming and problem solving section of the syllabus, which is part of exam paper 2. In this chapter, you will learn about top-down designs and structure diagrams, a brief introduction to flowcharts and pseudocode, types of test data, validation and verification methods, and using trace tables. A top-down design is the breakdown of a system into increasingly smaller subsystems which are much easier to manage. Advantages of top-down designs include each subsystem can be tested individually. Top-down designs allow multiple programmers to work on a problem without getting in each other's way and breaking down a problem into smaller parts makes it easier to solve a problem. A top-down design is displayed diagrammatically using a structured diagram, which shows the design of a computer system in a hierarchical manner. Examples of top-down designs A computer system broken down into multiple subsystems A government broken down into several departments and divisions And on the bottom right, can see a top-down design of an alarm clock app. Flowcharts and pseudocode. Flowchart. A flowchart is a diagrammatical representation of steps required to solve a task or problem. These steps and their order is called an algorithm. Pseudocode. A method of showing an algorithm using the English language and mathematical operators. Test data. Test data are results of data required to work through a solution. Test data falls into several categories. 1. Normal test data. It is data that should be accepted by the program and allow the program to process normally. For example, if a test is out of 50 marks, then normal test data include 10, 20, 37, 45, etc. Any number between 0 to 50. Abnormal test data. It is data that should be rejected by the program. For example, if a test is out of 50 marks, then abnormal test data include minus 10, minus 1, 51, 90, etc. Any number below 0 or above 50. Extreme data. It is data which includes the largest and smallest values and accepts them. For example, if a test is out of 50 marks, then extreme data includes 0 and 50. Boundary data. It is used to establish where the largest and smallest values occur. For example, if a test is out of 50 marks, then the boundary data for 0 is minus 1, while the boundary data for 50 is 51. So, minus 1 and 51 will be rejected. Moving on to the types of validation. Validation is an automatic check performed by the computer system to ensure that data is reasonable before it is accepted. There are seven types of validation checks which include range check, where only numbers or characters within a specified range will be accepted. For example, percentage marks between 0 and 100 are accepted. Land check, only an exact number of characters or a reasonable number of characters will be accepted. For example, if a password must exactly be eight characters in length, any passwords with less than seven or more than nine characters will be rejected. Type check ensures that data entered is only of a given data type. For example, the number of pets a person owns will always be an integer. Character check ensures that special characters and symbols are not present in the data. For example, a person's name would not contain special characters such as question mark, percentage symbol, or the exclamation mark symbol. Format check. Only data from a predefined format would be accepted. For example, a credit card would, would be in the following format. Presence check. It ensures that data has not been left blank. For example, a phone number is required to create an email account. 
Lastly, check digit. It is an extra digit included in a code. It is used to identify errors in data entry caused by a mistake such as mistyping. An example of a check digit calculation is ISBN 13, where the 13th digit of the code is calculated using the following algorithm. Add all the odd numbered digits together, excluding the check digit. Add all the even numbers together and multiply its sum by 3. Add the results from steps 1 and 2 and divide by 10. Take the remainder. If it is 0, use this value. Otherwise, subtract the remainder from 10 to find the check digit. Example question. Here, we can see an ISBN code with the digits 979-123456789 and the check digit 6. We start by labeling each digit with odd or even. Remember to label the first number with odd. First, we add all odd numbers together, getting 38 as a result. Then, we add all even numbers together and multiplying the sum by 3, which we get as 96. Add both results together and divide it by 10. We get the remainder 4. Subtract the remainder from 10 to get 6. Therefore, the check digit is 6. You can confirm this with the check digit given at the end of the code, which is also 6. Verification. It is a check used to make sure that data exactly matches its original source and does not change as it is being entered. Methods of verification include Double entry. Here, data is entered twice. The system then compares both entries and checks if the data entered the same. If it is not, an error message is displayed. Visual check. A manual check completed by the user entering the data. The user is asked to confirm that the data is correct using a checkbox. Parity check. A parity bit is added to a group of bits, usually a byte. Systems that use odd parity have an odd number of ones, while systems that use even parity have an even number of ones. Checksum. Data is sent in blocks, and an additional value, or the checksum, is sent at the end of the block. The checksum values are compared with a predefined algorithm. Before we start with trace tables, let's first understand the basic symbols of a flowchart. An oval represents a start or end point. A line or arrow is a connector that shows relationship between the representative shapes. A parallelogram represents an input or an output. A rectangle represents a process, and a diamond indicates a decision. In the flowchart to the right, we can see that all symbols mentioned are being utilized. A trace table is used to test the efficiency and outcome of an algorithm. In the exam, we are provided with an algorithm, usually in the form of a flowchart, and a table to fill in the results. For this question, we are given the test data 973, 18, 9, 2, 7, 1, 25, and 4. In our case, the test data is assigned as x since it says input x here. Before we are asked to input x, we are provided with three variables which are a, b, and c. So we start the first row by writing down or declaring the first three variables, which we get as 0, 0, and 100. Whenever we see an input box, we must input the values using the test data given. Our input value is 9. Moving on, is x greater than b? Yes, since b is 0 and x is 9. So b becomes 9. Now, a is equal to a plus 1. So we add 1 to the a column. Is a greater than 10? Not yet. So we move back to the start and input the next value for x, which is 7. I've decided to leave b blank since its assigned value does not change. If you want, you can also fill in the columns and the results will still be the same. Is x greater than b? No. 
since 9, which is the previous value we assigned, is bigger than 7. Is x smaller than c? Yes, since 7 is smaller than 100. Now we assign c as 7. Again, a is equal to a plus 1, so a becomes 2. Next, is 3 greater than b? Nope, since 9 is greater than 3. Is x smaller than c? Yes, since 3 is smaller than 7. So we assign c as 3. We can see a pattern here that a is incremented by 1 every time the cycle repeats, and the program stops when a is greater than 10, or equal to 10. Is x greater than b? Yes. So we write 18 and move all the way down. a is incremented by 1. Next, is x greater than b? Nope. Is x smaller than c? Nope. a is incremented by 1. Next, is x greater than b? No. Is x smaller than c? Yes. So we sign c as 2. a is incremented again. Next, is x greater than b? No. Is x smaller than c? No. And is x greater than b? Nope. Is x smaller than c? Yes. So we assign c as 1. a is incremented by 1 once again. Next, is x greater than b? Yes, it is. So we assign b as 25 and move down. a is incremented by 1. Next, is x greater than b? Nope. Is x smaller than c? Nope. a is incremented by 1. Moving one step down. Is a smaller than c? No, since a is 10. So the cycle stops here. We are then required to output b and c, which is 25 and 1. Here, we can see that the results are same even if you filled in the columns at parts where variables remain unchanged. Next example, we are given the test data above, which include 1 1.8, 2.0, 1.0, 1.3, 1.3, 1.5, 2.0, 1.3, 1.8, 1.3, and minus 1. By now, you should, you should get a hang of solving these types of questions. Here, the program stops once the size is equal to minus 1. Let's start by declaring the variables engine, count, and number, which is 0, 0, and 0. You can input the size here in this row, but it would just make your working quite confusing. So I suggest leaving it blank and moving on to the next row to input the size. Is size equal to minus 1? No. Is size greater than 1.5? Yes. So count is equal to 0 plus 1, which is 1. Next, number is equal to 0 plus 1, which becomes 1. Engine becomes 0 plus 1.8, which is 1.8. Next, we have 2. Is size equal to minus 1? No. Is size greater than 1.5? Yes. So count becomes 2, number becomes 2, and engine becomes 1.8 plus 2, which is 3.8. Next, we have 1. Is size equal to minus 1? No. Is size greater than 1.5? No. So count stays the same. Number becomes 3. And engine becomes 3.8 plus 1, which is 4.8. Next, we have 1.3. Is size equal to minus 1? Nope. Is size greater than 1.5? Nope. Again, count stays the same. Number becomes 4. And engine becomes 4.8 plus 1.3 which is 6.1. Again, we have 1.0. Is size equal to minus 1? No. Is size greater than 1.5? No. Count stays the same. Number becomes 5. And engine becomes 6.1 plus 1.0, which is 7.1. Now, we can see a pattern where number increments by 1 every time the cycle is repeated. Next, we have 2.5. Is size equal to minus 1? No. Is size greater than 1.5? Yes. So count becomes 3, number becomes 6, and engine becomes 7.1 plus 2.5, which is 9.6.
Next, we have 2. Is size equal to minus 1? No. Is size greater than 1.5? Yes. So count becomes 4, number becomes 7, and engine becomes 9.6 plus 2, which is 11.6. And the next one is 1.3. Is size equal to minus 1? No. Is size greater than 1.5? No. Count stays the same, number becomes 8, and engine becomes 11.6 plus 1.3, which is 12.9. Next, we have 1.9. Is size equal to minus 1? No. Is size greater than 1.5? Yes. So count becomes 5, number becomes 9, and en an engine becomes 12.9 plus 1.9, which is 14.8. Next, we have 1.3. Is size equal to minus 1? No. Is size greater than 1.5? No. So count stays the same, number becomes 10, an engine becomes 14.8 plus 1.3, which is 16.1. Lastly, we have minus 1. Is size equal to minus 1? Absolutely. Average is equal to engine, which is 16.1, divided by number, which is 10. 16.1 divided by 10 is 1.61. We then output the average and count, which is 1.61 and 5. Exercise question. Your answers should be similar to this one. So, by the end of this video, you should know what top down designs are, what flowcharts and pseudocode are, the different types of test data various validation and verification methods, and drawing trace tables with a given algorithm and test data. The resources used in the making of this video is shown to the right. I hope that this video has helped you, and I'll catch you guys in the next video, which will be algorithms. Thank you.